All right, it is 9.44 a.m. I did have one trade with ILUS and uh, attempted buy, but let's go over um, the thing here with ILUS. So today was a little different. I was um, on this screen watching ILUS and the other screen watching the overall markets. You know, if I'm in a potential warning panic bounce play with ILUS and the market just keeps falling off a cliff, you know, maybe I'm buying... Um, you know into a really bad spot maybe i'm trying to catch a falling knife and that's not really ideal so i have that in mind and i was in at 9 35 and that was at 128 right here this candle right here at 128 was my entry and it looked like a morning panic bounce play it was down like um i think 12 or 13 percent had a drop from 14 to this 12 um ish level the very bottom 12 6 and again i was in it right here at um 12 a and as you can see i was trading 4,000 shares i wanted to do 5,000 at first but then i dropped it at 4,000 just because the overall markets are kind of sketchy but um the issue was is that um this thing looked super sketchy i was only in this setup for 30 seconds because if you look at vwap i've seen this a lot of times and when i didn't know that much when i was still learning with morning panic bounce place i would get burned you know, I see the drop, I see the consolidation, but when VWAP is so close, so close to the, um, you know, range that it's trading in, it's always very, very smart to get out, at least for me, because I've seen it fail multiple, multiple times, and this one was no exception. I got out the same minute at um, 1285. I wasn't really planning to make money. I just had a, you know, a nice fill there, but... Um, it did continue the downtrend and then when we broke the day low at 1261 just briefly right I saw so many people at 125 1251 as you can still see with you know just a nice amount of people that were supporting it and I thought okay I can try again and I did have um this right here at 942 at 126 I didn't get executed simple as that and it immediately works so this would have been pretty nice um to sell into profitably and that's just going to happen um i don't think i placed the order that was below the ask when i placed my order but um it might have been the case and yeah this isn't gonna get filled which which stinks because you know it's at 13 now and um you know following my plan especially with what i went over on the weekly you know day trading recap i would have sold half at 12.83 and then I would have probably cut it um, if it breaks this 1275, which it looks like it might try to do, actually. Um, you know, or, again, just try my best to sell at a nice uptrend. And it did briefly get into the 13s, but, you know, um, I would have had a nice sell in the 12.9 level. And if it were to break this, which it can, this 1275 level, I'll sell the other half and I would still be profitable. And I would have given myself a chance to have been in a possibility that this thing, you know, doesn't break this level here. If it does, it's, um, but, you know, instead a very nice sell into the highs of an uptrend. So that's the idea with that. I'm just going to watch and see what this one does. I guess I can still consider it for like a double bottom or something like that. But I will probably trade less size because it's not the initial morning panic bounce play. This one I'm going to remove. It has no volume. This one has no volume. Um, this one has no volume, and this one is just sketchy, so I haven't really considered it. I'm going to have to remove these. They have a lot of volume until they don't, and when they don't, they look super ugly. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's the case right now. I'm going to clean up this chart. Um, the overall markets are trying to turn around, which is cool. Right? But, you know, it's only... Um, 18 minutes into the market open, so over 18 minutes after the market open, we'll see what this one ultimately does. But um, yeah, that that would have been super nice if I were to have been a part of this um, with my entry at 12.6. At least I was on the right track. But you know, I hope next time I can actually be in the trade because you know I want to be more than on the right track. Hey, I just want to briefly show this. I did take a screenshot, like, um, just slightly after I got out, two minutes after I got out. And I just want to show how sketchy the thing was looking. And this is very common, again, when the stock um, is just trading so close to VWAP on the morning panic bounce play setup. 
you can see the wall here looks nice at 1263 but look at the tape lots of people selling with lots of size um, into the bid although there are people hitting the ask you can see there's a large seller at um, 12.7 with 500,000 shares in you know there were a lot of things like that but um, you know that, that's just what I wanted to go over as to why it just you know looked so sketchy because it's you know hard to see how sketchy it was um, after it's happened but it was pretty sketchy looking all right it is 10:34, and I had another trade with IATK and this time I actually pushed myself into trading a larger position size according to my dollar risk level and um, I think for what it was, I traded it the best that I could. But this thing can totally break out of this 36 range and make a move towards 38. And that would be super nice. Um, before I start with this one, I was actually interested in JFIL. Just 100 shares, right? Um, I think it was this one right here. I think it was this. No, it was right here. Um, I just saw, okay, 87 is at the ask. And then 82, I think, was at the bid. And I thought, all right, well, what's what's going to hurt if I just try 100 shares at this um, 87 level? Because it had a dip under VWAP, and it came back. And then it had another dip under VWAP. So I thought this was like a double bottom. And I could be in that 87, just 100 shares. If it breaks, you know, um, the day low at 81, I'll be out. And I'll lose like $1.20 or something tiny, right? And I hesitated too much. It had a quick, um, you know, spike to 94. The bid now was at 89.8. It did briefly drop at the day low, not exactly, um, you know, the very bottom, but, you know, it never broke under, and then it would have uptrended. I don't know if I would have traded this one profitably, because it just doesn't have any volume. This one truly does not have any volume. And then I traded INTK, and that is nice, a 250k bidder at 355, okay. Um, I was in at, well, why was I in this? Because this thing... Um, you know, it had a nice run-up, right? Um, you look at the daily chart, definitely a nice run-up. Very scary looking, but, you know, it's it's downtrending. It could be a point where it might try to bottom itself and try to reverse. As you can see, it had this trend line here, and then that when it broke it, you know, I was much more interested in it. I was a bit cautious because I saw how it would, like, not trade anything and be above the trend line, and then it would get right back under. So I kind of made sure that wasn't the case here. Um, or at least, you know, just lower as much risk as possible. I was in at 1029, and this one did not feel like four minutes. It felt like I held this one for 10 minutes. I was in INTK at uh, 35. 1029 was right here. Right here, 1029 at 35. Pretty good entry. I was... You know, thinking I was going to get the ask at 355, I got 35 right here. And, you know, I thought, all right, well, you know, these are some actual candles past um, the trend line. It's broken. It could try to reverse. And, again, this thing can totally make a move over a longer period of time. But this was a setup where I would normally just trade maybe um, a 1,000 shares instead of what I should be trading, which is a $10 risk level with anything OTC related that is not a morning panic bounce play and um, I was out half of my position at 36 at 1032 right here I was just not really liking the price action it was a bit scary and um, the level two was off a lot of times it's just not right and, and it's fine you know um, it's it's a bit sketchy but you know um, I just Threw in the cell there, and I was able to get a nice execution at 36 with my goal of just getting out of um, half of my position, break even, because of the fact that um, it was looking a bit sketchy. It wasn't immediately working, so I got out, again, half of my position, just to lower my risk in that if it were to have broken um, the day low, or I've gotten near the day low, since, you know, when I risk the day low, I'm going to get out if it gets there, not necessarily laugh you know after it breaks it because then it might have a big red candle um so again i just lowered my risk and then i sold the other half at 1033 which was the next minute just because of the price action just looking kind of sketchy looking you know it didn't look like it was really working out and as you saw in the beginning of the recording i would have been able to have sold 
um, you know, profitably, um, although not much, you know, because this thing ended up being a scratch ultimately um, at 355 when there was that big bidder there. But I want to see if this thing is going to fail and break the day low. Maybe it'll come back to the day low and it'll hold and then it will actually maybe try to reverse. It doesn't have to, of course. Or if it might eventually break past this 36 level. I want to see what it does. So, yeah, that's what I'm interested in. As with IOUS, I really wanted it to try to break VWAP. But today's just not the day for that. It did break it eventually and continue to downtrend. Maybe I'll have interest in this later. But um, probably not as much. Uh, but, you know, it could even try to do a double bottom. You know, where it is right here. But um, perhaps, you know, perhaps this could be something to consider in the future. And um, yeah, that's, that's about it. This is what I wanted with ILUS, something where it's just, you know, trading, consolidating under VWAP, and then it breaks past it. Right here, it's trying to break past it. We just didn't get that really here. It, you know, it got rejected, so... Yeah, that's where I'm at right now. I will make an update later. Again, this one was a scratch, but I did sell profitably. I think I made, I don't know, like four bucks from this. Yep, and I'm totally out of my position. <laughs> I've learned to start checking that. So, yeah, I'll make an update later. All right, it is 256. I do have a regret not taking a part of this price action, um, especially this right here, because this... Could have been like the inverse head and shoulders, although this one also was, and you know, it's just kind of, um, you know, in hindsight, very easy to consider, but when you're at the moment, it's much harder, but I think there was still more possibility for me to have done this if I put in more efforts, and, um, you know, this thing did the VWAP breakout that I was thinking of, and I'm looking at it now, thinking maybe it can do it again, um, like a higher low um, from this level here below VWAP, but... Um, I just don't like um, the time so much, and I don't like how, you know, there's a big seller at the ask. Although, I mean, I put out my freaking calculator, right? Like, it's only $12,000. It's, it's not that big um, from what I thought it was, but somebody could just one, you know, order and take out one two five but the volume isn't really there and yeah this thing would have been nice for me to have considered it here or even here for that reversal and you know i could have tried here with like um i could have tried honestly if i were to have gotten an execution at 12 2 i could have tried ten thousand shares and then with the idea of it um you know cutting and losing ten dollars if it were to go back to this um day low which is 12.1, and this one offered a nice move all the way to 13. Um, I would like to be a part of that at some point. I just have to keep getting, um, I guess, more motivated into doing something like that. Nice sell-off with HMBO, but no interest here. And as for the other setups, um, this one for with INTK, what this one did is it, it did a downtrend, right? I, I had a feeling about the price action, but, you know, it wasn't 100%. Um, I don't have a genie ball, and it broke under this range here, and then it bounced off of the line one more time, and then it actually turned around, so I guess in theory, I was on the right track, I just got into this one right here when it first broke past the trend line, but I actually followed it one more time with this massive volume, which was pretty evident, because there was a lot of selling action here, and I guess once that person who had a lot of shares or whatever, um, once that was wiped out, it did do a nice subtrend from the 33 level to VWAP, which was 36 and a half, so not horrible. And um, I think the volume was there to offer some trades with that, so that's about it for right now. I'll make an update when the markets are closed, but I want to see if this can do something. If the price action was better, if there wasn't you know, um, these two uh, big sellers at the ask, or if it was reversed, I would be totally in it right now. But for that reason, I am not in the setup with IOUS here. All right, it is 3.30 p.m., and this is a great lesson, I guess, to trust your gut. Look at this big red candle here, and I got in a tiny trade um, in and out. 
Um, I held it for four minutes basically and I sold my share, my single share at um, right here, this candle at um, 93.40. I sold it at the ask, um, basically the maybe the tippy top, almost a tippy top of this candle right here. And I wish I could zoom in a bit more, but um, right after this candle, boom. Um, 9186 big red candle got to 90. This is why I like, um, you know, um, OTCs because it doesn't really do stuff like this. But I mean, if it's in your favor on the listed stock, that's really nice. Um, I want to see what this thing can do by the market close. But why did I sell? Um, and why did I buy? So, watch this thing go to 98 while I go over this. But, um, I was in it at 325 which was a really I like the entry a lot right here in this green candle and I was in that 9330 it was actually a nice entry if you ask me considering um, where I thought I was gonna get in and um, what's the thing so this is a Trump stock um, what is it called truth social I think and you know I just like the basic idea that it kind of broke out of this um, $90 range if you ask me there's a little wake here at 97 and it can go to 100 and yesterday i believe yesterday is when um it just re got released on the ios store so we have a breakout we have it being released it's so far you know consolidating it's holding itself it's not like um you know uh buy the rumor sell the news right um because it was up um, at the time 10 percent ish and again holding very well especially with how um sketchy the overall markets were today just really sketchy and this thing was holding in um so then you know i thought okay this could be something that i could buy and i might hold it overnight um you know just that the, the fact that it came out yesterday and everything and um today being a tuesday is actually the first trading day of um, you know, the week because Monday was President's Day and I just figured that maybe this thing, um, you know, just with all of these things, fundamentals and technicals involved, um, you know, this thing could try to do something nice. Now, if I was really looking at it, I could see the overall uptrend here, here, higher lows, right? And I could have gone in at a much better price, but I wasn't a part of it. I started looking at it the moment it broke past VWAP. And I also like how it broke VWAP. I never wanted to buy it here. I wanted to buy it on the bit of a dip. And I saw it was starting to follow this little trend line here. So also when it broke the trend line, you know, and it looked like it was trying to hold itself, I also considered an entry for that reason. Um, you know, I knew not to just buy it up here. I wanted it to do something where it kind of breaks past VWAP. It downtrends. It holds a support level higher than a previous low. And then it can continue. And, you know, maybe it'll try to do it down here. But... Um, yeah, this thing's really falling off a cliff and the reason why I got out of my position and um, Yeah, just <laughs> made 10 pennies from this was because this candle was so sketchy You know, I didn't like how it just had a uptrend here and how it just got sold off So horribly the price action looked so bad You know the candle looked so ugly and it just gave me really bad vibes and um, when I did get in this setup, I was thinking of cutting it if it were to have broken this um, $92 level. So I would have been cutting it, you know, um, immediately afterwards if I didn't sell right then and there. And that was just a good, I, you know, thing um, in terms of listening to your guy. Just, just felt like this was wrong when it had that candle like that. So if it was just consolidating um, or downtrending slowly, sure. But the way this thing, like, tried to do a you know, like a nice move and it just got sold into and it's doing it kind of prematurely. Um, you know, I felt like it lost its momentum that I could have used later the uptrend. I got out for that reason. Uh, I'll make an update to see what this one does at the market close, but, you know, um, I'll make an update then and we'll see what DWAC does. All right, it is 4.57 p.m. and I'm here to call it off. Overall, I finished up. Um, four dollars and I believe 58 cents and that was trading three Setups that were scratches and they did not work when I was in the first one was with ILUS and um, You know, I knew how sketchy it was looking when it was like right here and it 
you know, hasn't broken the day low and the VWAP is so close and, you know, best case scenario, I would have been in, um, in this right here at 12.6, I would have gotten filled and that would have been a super nice, um, move towards the upside. This would have been something nice to sell into. I would have sold half. Um, ideally if I follow my plan at 12.9 and then I would probably risk this level breaking as 12.75 and I might have considered because it's taken a really long time to sell in this range. Otherwise, I would have definitely have sold it when it broke it here. And I still would have gone out for a nice profit there. And a great attempt to, you know, have that possibility that I sell uh, for a continued breakout, you know, past VWAP. Um, if I was better, I would have been more aggressive and considered maybe a setup here or here. This is something I want to do. And this is something I can do with 10,000 shares, you know, again, especially if I'm in at, for example, 12.2 and I risk this 12.1 level breaking, I can buy 10,000 shares. If it gets to the day low, I get out and, um, you know, I lose 10 bucks with a $10 risk reward, uh, not risk reward, it's a $10 risk level. And this one, you know, uh, I guess double bottomed and it had a nice move to 13 and uh, 2. I probably would have sold half, if not everything, at VWAP here because it's not a morning panic bounce play, but definitely um, I probably might have considered selling, you know, when it breaks the trend line for sure. So who knows how I would have traded that, but this is something I want to be a part of in the future. I've seen this work so many times, and here's an example where I did it. Um, again, also inverse head and shoulders here or maybe here when this one didn't really you know work um it just got to this level i should have tried if i were to have tried one of these i would have been a lot happier i don't mind the fact that i didn't get filled there and as for intk i just was not in at the time that you know um it did the turnaround right i tried it here um it followed the trend line one more time if i can bring back the trend line here and then it eventually did it so this was pretty cool again um i don't mind this one at all i did the best that i could and i got in at a pretty good price i did follow my dollar risk level here which is a step in the right direction and as for dwac um i think maybe what i should have done with this one is that when it broke past vwap and it came back here and i thought all right you know looks like it's trying really hard to hold it especially because it broke the trend line here you know i don't mind that i tried it here and i got out i'm very happy that i got out uh, when I just saw the price action wasn't looking good, but I think I could have tried it again when it came back to this 90 level. Um, not because it worked in hindsight as 2020, but that was the original breakout point that I was talking about. The one that I consider it to be the level maybe you want to base it off the wick right here or maybe, uh, you know, 100, whatever um, is your goal. But to me, it would have been 90 and um, I probably should have considered that, especially how it broke past VWAP right and then it came back and then that held that level and that did a nice move from 90 and it did get even higher um it went from 90 to 94 that would have been nice and this is something that i can obviously trade with a lot of size because it's a listed stock and um, we'll see what this one can do i did have an uh, idea overall to consider it for an overnight setup so um, I'll be interested in seeing what this one does tomorrow and i think that summarizes it again i did miss this one right here um, but, uh, yeah, it was just kind of iffy because, you know, it's so crazy and I would have only have traded that one with a hundred shares. So that's it. I just have to get more aggressive. Um, I do like the fact that I tried a larger size with IOE West and that I tried here, even though I didn't get filled. Um, I gotta be more aggressive on these setups. Um, like it is with that. Nothing wrong with INTK. I tried it for what it was. I don't mind that I didn't try again here because it could have just kept following it on the downside and I don't want to necessarily try again on the setup that i don't have that much um convention um uh, with and yeah dwac probably should have tried it when it tested the original breakout level at 90 uh that's all i have for today a lot of good lessons and i gotta get more aggressive